Hi, just another very quick uh, follow-up video from the previous one. If you haven't seen it, click here and uh, you'll be able to watch that where I adjusted this um, Agilent uh, frequency counter I've got that's just got its built-in um, 5 ppm uh, standard. I adjusted the uh, calibration pot on the back there to match my uh, rubidium oscillator here and I did that with the frequency display on the front. But I just thought I'd show you another method and um, Someone mentioned, uh, you know, uh, does, uh, you know, having one of these uh, non-conductive, uh, non-metallic um, uh, adjustment things matter? Well, let's take a look at it. What I've got here is got the scope set up. Uh, channel 1 here that I'm triggering off, that is the uh, 10 megahertz reference output from my rubidium oscillator which is also which I've also got uh, going into the front of the frequency counter which we'll take a look at in a minute and uh, then I've got the 10 megahertz output here from the internal 5 ppm you know crappy internal oscillator that's going into channel 2 there and we can see and I'm triggering off a of channel 1 here the rubidium oscillator and you can see that that's not bad at all this you can see the uh, 10 megahertz output from well the 10 megahertz oscillator inside the Agilent uh, scope is not quite the same uh, frequency if they were exactly the same of course they would be completely locked this second waveform would not be moving at all and of course we can you know we can trigger off uh, channel 2 if we want and then the other one uh, will move it doesn't matter but we're going to trigger off our rubidium reference here and we're going to adjust this waveform and this is another way you can do it. I did it before using the frequency display on this but this can actually be a better method. It's more analog uh, like even though I'm using a digital scope you can do it on an analog uh, scope. Works exactly the same so watch this. Now um, I've already adjusted it so it was re it's reasonably close. It's a, as you can see it's scrolling past it maybe a couple of hertz and this is actually a way that we can directly see the difference between these. Now, um, what I've got, what, what I'll do first is I'll use uh, this screwdriver here and I'll put this into the pot and I near, near the pot in there and I won't actually touch it. So, watch this. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. It's going berserk. And then I'll just touch the pot inside and it's gone completely haywire. Look at that. But if I do the same thing with this uh, non uh, conductive non metallic um, little adjustment pot. I can go near it and it will change a little bit. Will change a little bit. And if I touch it, it's not nearly as bad as the other ones. So there you go. That is why you use these because what uh, the pot in there is not a uh, resistive pot, it's an adjustable capacitor. And even with this uh, plastic, it's act acting as a dielectric. Even though you don't touch it and you get very close to it, that air, you're going to have the dielectric of the air, then the dielectric of the material, and then your hand, etc. So you do actually change it a little bit just by going near it. I'll try and get it more spot on so you can see that better in a second. And uh, But of course the metal one, um, that is much, much worse. That one just goes crazy. So when you're adjusting these things, you really do want one of these plastic adjustment pots. Now let me see if I can trim this pot in. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yes, I do have my tongue at the right angle. So that's not bad. Can I get it? No, if I move it more in that direction. No, it's very touchy. Oh, oh almost. Almost had it there. Just out of pure luck. It's, uh, you're real. It is a bit of luck depending on where the sweet spot of the, that, the plates in that capacitor need to be as to where you can physically put them but that's you know we're getting there I have had it so it's very very close and you know that's not too bad and that's maybe about two hertz out because if you follow the peaks it may be it's like two hertz so what we should see on this frequency counter if we turned around and have a look at the frequency we should actually see that that frequency is about two hertz out there we go it's two hertz under because it's going in this direction. If it was going in that direction, then um, it would be two hertz over. 
So there you go. You can actually you don't have to you don't need a display like this to actually uh, see that. You can just adjust it using a scope like this. So if we make it go the other direction, oh, oh look at that. I've got it almost bang on. It's just the act of touching it. My body extra capacitance in there is just making it go back in the other direction. So this is just another technique. I think it's a better technique for adjusting these sorts of oscillators because it's uh, you get direct visual feedback. It's much better than just watching some digital display flip over because you really get a feel for it. But ah, oh, this is this is getting really tricky now. If I take that off, there we go. We're maybe one hertz. See, it's taking one oh no one oh, just under a hertz so in the other direction so it should just be now showing over almost a hertz on the display and there it is spot on so that's just another way to adjust these pots and of course this thing will uh, drift with uh, time as well because it's you know it's not a very it's not an oven controlled uh, oscillator so when this thing warms up you might find it'll slowly stop and maybe drift back in the other direction like that given enough time like maybe if i blow on it perhaps <sighs> no but certainly if i uh bring some extra capacitance near there what you can get this reasonably spot on. I mean, we're talking like a one 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 hertz is actually uh, 0.1 ppm. So, and that's why on these ones with the stock oscillators, they put the uh, calibration pot on the back because, uh, well, because the oscillators are so crap that really, you know, before any critical operation, you probably should adjust it against the standard, really. And, well, if you're doing anything serious, you shouldn't have... A uh, internal oscillator and if you've got a reference and the silly thing there is if you've got a rubidium or a better oscillator to compare it against well you should be using that as the external input anyway but anyway there you go that's just another method to do that and yes these tools do actually make a difference so hope you like that oh almost eight minutes worth so much for my quick video again all right here we go I think it's going to reverse folks I think we're going to get it we're going to get it reversing. There we go. Oh, it's spot on. Look, it's spot on, and it's going to drift backwards. There you go. That is the oscillator internal. It was bang on for a second there. Well, at one point, it was absolutely precisely the same as the uh, rubidium clock. And there we go. It's drifting back. And if I put my thumb, even just putting my thumb over that hole, you can see that should, I can make that go faster. Maybe, just a little bit. You can kind of sort of see it. So, yeah, just any capacitive coupling near that thing at all, even half a bee's dick there of capacitance, one hundredth of a puff or something is just enough to make that sort of drift a little bit. So, yeah, stock oscillators, hate them. As you can see, there's uh, other oscillator options on this thing. You can get the, uh, uh, I'm not sure, I, I assume that the, uh, uh, US, uh, yeah, ultra stable oven, I guess, is the best one. And there's a high stability oven, and then there's the, well, I guess, I don't know, MS medium stability oven, I guess. But uh, yeah, this does, doesn't have it. It's just got a regular, you know, SC cut crystal in there, and eh, whatever, hopeless. And what do you know? This thing does have 12 digit capability. I thought this model didn't. What I did was go in there and uh, selected the uh, gate and set it permanently to the number of uh, digits like that instead of a regular gate time I forced it to a number of digits and it actually goes up to, allows you to go up to uh, 15 actually but it can't obviously uh, display 15 oh, there we go can't obviously display that many digits it can only display 12 but uh, maybe internally I don't know software wise you could read it out perhaps but certainly does display 12 digits. I hope they're not uh, dummy ones. I assume not. And I've actually done a video uh, way, way back on this and uh, drift 
of uh, reference uh, or oscillators, uh, crystal oscillators like this, against uh, GPS locked rubidium reference and how you can actually uh, track the drift of this both positive and negative over time and then get uh, data out of the thing so if you want to if you haven't uh, seen that it was many many years ago and uh, you can do that by clicking right here ta-da the wonders of YouTube hyperlinking wow and yes okay if you want to get all funky you can just switch your scope into XY mode and do the famous lissagist pattern here and you can do it so hey there we go I put my finger near it and I prefer the waveform like some people prefer um, some people prefer this but I certainly don't and you want to get a stable circle uh, circle there and the wobble rate of course is the same as the waveform drift rate and there we go we're almost bang on so you basically want your perfect well you want a stable circuit there and circle there that doesn't uh, undulate but nah this thing's impossible to adjust but ultimately I don't think that's you know it looks funkier but it's not as useful as the waveform I like the waveform catch you next time